this is a relatively simple DIY and you can have a lot of fun with it. So what you really need is some trimming and you can get this at any fabric store and you can have fun with it. Whatever trim you want to buy, um, you can just mess around and buy different kinds of trim. And you're going to need um, some rhinestones and fabric glue and if you want to just have a little more security with the rhinestones, you can use E6000 glue, but it's not completely necessary. You're going to need scissors, and then of course you're going to need the shoes. So that's all you're going to need for this DIY. Alright, let's get started. For these kind of free design DIYs, I like to just do the first shoe first, and then I go back and I do the second shoe just based on the design I did on the first shoe. So I don't have an exact design in mind, I'm kind of just doing it from top of my head so this is fun because you have the freedom you can do whatever design that you feel like doing uh, for me I like my tip is to just do the first shoe first and then just copy exactly what you did on the first shoe so then you have identical shoes looking at my second shoe which will be off camera as my reference I will work on this shoe so the first thing you're gonna do is just kind of take the trim and go a little crazy Take your Fabric Fusion fabric glue. This is my favorite because it has a little needle spout, so it makes it easier for intricate um, fabric designs. This is very intricate, the one that I'm using, so it makes it a lot easier to get the glue on. And then you just glue it on. need a little dab of glue for each spot you don't have to go crazy with the glue and anytime you glue something you just want to always make sure you start in the center because it will make your life a whole lot easier so you guarantee that it's evenly on Okay, good start so far. So you're going to keep with the same trim. And I want to do the same thing on top. But I'm not going to use the whole thing. I'm going to use probably... So I use... I'm just measuring or counting what I used on first shoe to make sure that I do the same thing on the second shoe. And then you just go ahead and glue again. I like to keep any extra fabric on. So if it's like a little bit over, how this goes over this part of the shoe, and then you just cut it after. I'd rather just have the extra coming out a little bit than to cut too short. Then you can just go back and you just cut it off. Easy peasy. Perfect. So I'm going to use this trim, the same trim that I'm doing one last time on the bottom of the shoe. So this is what we have so far. Off to a great start. The next thing that we're going to do is, what are we going to do next guys? We're going to do this little trim right here. That, for me personally, I thought it was cool to do this little design right here. So that's what we're going to do. I just, I never measure things unless I like have to. I hate measuring. So I just measure usually on the shoe a lot of times or on whatever I'm DIYing. I feel like it's just better to get exactly what you want anyway when you measure it on the shoe. And then what I do is I always cut a little more than I need because it's better to be safe than sorry. Because it's, it's harder to add on than to just cut off, you know? And like I said, we're going to start gluing from the middle. For this trim, it, it's fabric-y, but it has like a little like tinsel-y uh, pieces in it. So 
So it was harder to glue with the fabric glue, so this is where the E6000 comes in handy. This is a great glue, it's an industrial glue, and it's great for metals and non-fabric items if you want them to stick, stick forever. So now you kind of just glue from the center as always. These are coming out so cool. I'm so excited. And I have glue everywhere. <laughs> okay. So like I said, when you have a little extra, you can just cut it off. No big deal. Now you do have to be careful with the E6000 glue because it doesn't, it sticks immediately but it doesn't hold immediately. You have, it's a good and a bad thing because you have a little time to move it around if you mess up where you stick it. But then you need to be careful that you don't move it while it's drying. Okay, almost there guys. So I had this cool little trim that I decided to use as like a little accent around the shoe. So here, 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 and here I wanna use it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut some pieces as an accent. I'm just go, gonna go ahead and cut all the pieces I need now so I don't have to worry about it later. Everything you do is matching and symmetrical. So these match and these match and we're good to go. So you're gonna take that E6000 glue again and you're just going to add these little accent pieces. It's so fun like what you can do with things that are not necessarily used in a traditional way. Like this trim is clearly for dresses and be even curtains or other things and it's cool that you can use it to create these shoes. I'm always in the fabric store and I swear people think I'm like this crazy designer but I'm just always DIYing something. I'm never making like a dress or anything. And like I said, because this glue doesn't set right away, you can kind of mess around with it. So if you want to like adjust the placement to make sure they're even, you have that little leeway to do so, which is great because I feel like I'm always moving things around. I need that in my life. Commitment is scary. Okay. So just checking my reference shoe, and we're gonna go and put on this, some more accents. Also, you wanna make sure when you're gluing these on, you glue them on the right side. Sometimes the trim, one side is different from the other, like technically it's inside out, so you wanna make sure when you're gluing it on, you glue it on the right side. I'm just putting it on the side right here, just like that. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. Another thing about the E6000 glue is that it has kind of a strong smell. So you kind of want to maybe have the windows open, have some ventilation because it has a strong smell. For this project, it's a smaller project so it won't be as aggressive, but when I'm using this for bigger projects, it definitely has a strong scent. There you go. A 
Okay, so one last step with the trim is, see these little lines right here? Like, it's just so defined and you can see where it ends and it's not exactly perfect. And like right here on the shoe, it's like, you don't wanna leave it like that. You don't wanna give away that it's DIY. You want people to see your shoes and think you bought them that way. You wanna like wake up like this. So, what you're gonna do is just take some trim and put it on the edges. See, right there, so you cover it right up. Amazing. Like I said, always make sure to cut more than you need. And you're just gonna glue it right on. It while I do the other one, the other side, because I don't want to cut it and move it by accident. Like I said, it takes a minute to set, so we're just going to let that set for a minute. And the next thing we're going to do is just do some trim along the bottom. What makes a good DIY are the, the finishing touches. I feel like that's what takes it to the next level of not looking crafty. So you always want to make sure to pay attention to just the edges and the finishing touches or whatever you're DIYing so that it looks good. So I went ahead and cut off that little extra detail right there. And we're done with the trim part. So the last step is just to add rhinestones, which is fun. You can go a little crazy and be dazzled. -ies. These are rhinestones that already stick on, so you don't necessarily need glue, but I always have a hard time with these kind of rhinestones. They don't stick for me for some reason. It says that they're gonna stay and they don't. So I don't even bother like assuming they're gonna stick and I just glue them. E6000 glue, you can use that again. It's the perfect glue for things like that. That's usually what I use this glue for is if I'm ever doing a project that needs um, rhinestones or any type of detailing like that, beading. This is a great glue for that. So you're gonna need tweezers for this. And I'm just placing them on in whatever design I like. But it's hard to pick these up with your hands and glue them without them getting stuck all over you. So I like to use tweezers, especially because these nails make it hard for me to do anything because I sacrifice. I sacrifice to have these nails, guys. I just love them so much, but they're a bit of a hassle sometimes. Because I like to build things, I like to do things, and I just struggle sometimes, but I'm okay, I'm okay with it. So I thought this little design was cute, and I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that on this empty area. So what I'm doing with the rhinestones, I'm kind of just filling the empty space with them because I think you could go a little crazy with the trim. You don't want to just go too crazy with it where it's just like, I don't know, too gaudy because these are already kind of gaudy. So, you know, never want to go too overboard. Less is more. Okay. So just copying kind of the same design on this side with the rhinestones. So there's these empty spaces here too that I think it's just like a nice accent to add the rhinestones, you know? Just makes it look, it takes it to the next level for sure. And these, you know, would be shoes that would cost you a lot, a lot of money. And for less than $20 of trim, you don't even have to spend that much. Um, I went a little overboard with the trim I bought because I wanted all different kinds. But you could e easily just spend like a solid ten dollars to make your shoes look like eight hundred dollar shoes. So it's great. And then we're going to do so. I'm just literally any space that I feel like needs to be filled. I'm just kind of sticking a rhinestone there. 
making it look pretty you know I think it looks so pretty they look good you know you do these things you don't you don't really, you know what it's going to look like, but when you see it, you're like, you get extra excited about it because you're like, I made this and it didn't even cost me a lot of money. You know, it's fun to transform things and just make something new out of something you already have. Especially as women, I feel like we just overdo it sometimes with the shopping and buying just more than what we need. So these, this is great because kind of, you know, saves you some money and you get to be creative. For me, this is even therapeutic. I love just sitting and just creating something new. I'm going to show you where we are so far. So far, this is where we are with the rhinestones. And I'm just going to fill this these gaps right here and then we're done I swear these tweezers are a lifesaver. I tried to do it without tweezers before, like another bead project, and it was a nightmare. Bees are just sticking all over me. So like I said, you have to be careful with these because they will move around, just like I just had to fix one right now because it popped up a little bit. But, like I said, you have a minute to fix it, so all's good in the neighborhood. <laughs> Alright, one right here. Cool, cool, cool. These are so fun, guys. These might be one of the favorite, one of my favorite ones. Alright. When you die, so then I kind of clean up the mess a little bit. I think I need a cleaner, like a helper who cleans for me. That's all I need. Just, just come and clean. That's all I need. There you go. This is the front. Still looks plain, but then, what is it? What do they say? Business in the front, party in the back. So this is the final detail of the shoe. They are awesome and you just transform your shoes from looking plain to amazing. Don't forget to subscribe and give it a big thumbs up. See you guys next time.